Jack Keen, run one. My life has always revolved around alpine skiing. I've been doing this sport for as long as I can remember and has brought me a lot of fun and opportunities. However, through all that fun are some inherent risks that all athletes are subject to. Injuries are nearly inevitable, especially in alpine skiing. And I, as well as many of my fellow competitors, have gone through plenty of setbacks. There's one injury that stands out in my skiing career, the time I broke my leg. January 25th, 2012. I was on a ski trip in Austria with my ski club, Ski and Snowboard Club Vale. We were at Jurgsens for a second day of training. All I can remember was that we were training giant slalom. As I was coming to the bottom of the training course, I reached out for the finish line. And in the course of that motion, I caught my edge and fell on my side. I started sliding down the slope. 20 yards later, I crashed into a metal pole and came to an abrupt stop. The first thing that I remembered when I regained consciousness was seeing people circling my field of vision. I was looking directly at the sky. I felt trapped in my body like it was some sort of dream. All I could help was to mutter out, what's going on, and what happened, and this can't be real. My coach, who was right beside me, could only manage to say, you had a, a bad crash. That made sense to my rattled brain as I was lying there helpless. I didn't feel any pain from the impact, but clearly something had gone wrong. I shortly was put into a stretcher and lifted by a helicopter to head towards the Innsbruck Hospital. My right femur was fractured. I had one centimeter long lacerations in each my liver and spleen, and my left lung was partially collapsed. Over the phone, my mom had to give the Austrian doctor's consent to cut me open and put a metal plate and screws along the side of my femur. It was five in the morning for her. She and my dad were woken up in the middle of the night by a phone call from the director of my ski club. They were informed about the situation and that my mom had to pack her bags within the next hour in order to catch her flight to Austria. She would take care of me during the two weeks I spent in the hospital. I don't remember much from the first few days in the hospital. It was all a bed-stricken haze. Eight days after the crash, I was finally allowed to sit upright in my bed. Although insignificant, this was a large stepping stone to me. The following day, I was allowed to have my legs hang over the bed. I was inches away from breaking the bonds of my bed. The day after, on my birthday, I was finally allowed to walk on crutches. Okay, Jack, I'm taking a movie of this action. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. All right. The first few steps had me almost faint. I was gasping for breath. I felt absolutely weak. Over the next few days, my last days in Innsbruck, I was slowly able to expand my range of travel. Life started to feel a lot more normal. After two weeks of staying in the hospital, I was allowed to leave. My mom and I flew back to our home in Vail, Colorado, and from that point on, it was entirely about getting back to snow as soon as possible. All the time I would be spending on skiing was instead used to improve my leg. Leaving school to go to physical therapy each day, doing pool workouts each day after school, doing my prescribed exercises right before I went to bed. Each day, my leg felt a little stronger, a little more mobile, and a little more athletic. I would be lying if I said I was totally content of where I was. I knew I would be back in time for next season, but the road in front of me was long and monotonous. I felt like I had to entirely relearn how to use my body. All of the balance, coordination, quickness, and strength I had beforehand was gone. Things as simple as bending and extending my leg were very difficult tasks. I remember going to a ski race, and while I was happy to see my friends who I haven't seen in months, and to receive so much uplifting support for my recovery. It was depressing to watch them race knowing I was a long way away from joining them again. Regardless, I still put work into my recovery every single day, all the way through the summer. In August, I was finally cleared to ski and I went down to Chile with my family. It was definitely strange to ski again after such a long hiatus and I felt like I had to relearn how to ski. I had to take things very slow at first but after a couple weeks, I was back to full speed. 
things had finally become normal. All the work I had put in up to this point seems to have paid off. Not only was I able to get my body back in shape for skiing, I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. All of the balance, coordination, quickness, and strength I had lost from the accident was relearned and improved. <laughs> Jackie. That season, I came back as if I had never left. I quickly reestablished myself as one of the top skiers in the region, and I qualified for U16 Nationals at the end of the season. This run at U16 Nationals caught the eye of US ski team coaches and earned me a spot on the national training group, the development group for the US ski team. I guess you could say the rest is history, as I am now a collegiate athlete. But as I reflect on my life seven years ago, I firmly believe I would have not been here today if it weren't for that accident. It taught me how to work hard each and every day, regardless of how monotonous or frustrating it could be at times. I was more effective at improving my skiing as I had a newfound ability and determination to figure issues out. And most importantly, I began to appreciate how fortunate I am to be skiing nearly every day and that it is something that I cannot take for granted. Broken leg included, I am grateful for everything that skiing has given me.